I'm pretty excited. We're at the very end of Storm Runners by Roland Smith, which we're reading with special permission by Scholastic. I can't wait to get to the end. I mean, they're in danger right up until the end. 3.33 a.m. At last they were standing at the gate, almost exactly 12 hours after they'd left the school. It's locked, Nicole said, obviously upset. Don't you have a key, Chase asked. Of course, but that's not the problem. The padlock is hanging on the outside. We only lock the gate when we're not here. That means dad isn't here. He must have gone out looking for us. What about Mama Rossi, Chase asked. She would have stayed behind in case the phones came back on and I called. I'm sure your dad's fine. He probably got forced into a shelter. I hope so. Do you have a backup generator on the farm? A small one, but it only powers one building at a time. We have three generators in the rigs. Let's get through and power the farm up. Nicole unlocked the gate. They walked through it. She closed the gate, but didn't lock it. The quad was exactly where Chase had parked it, though it had tipped over. Do you want to walk or try to ride up to the house? Ride, Nicole and Rashawn said together. That's what I thought, Chase said, but the quad is going to be unstable in the wind with three people on it. We'll have to keep a low profile. That means down low. Remember that talked about the building having a low profile. If it starts to tip, just lean the opposite way. No sudden moves. We don't want to flip it. They righted the quad. Chase swung on first, turned the key, and then pushed the ignition switch. It didn't start. With the rain and being tipped over by the wind, it could have any number of problems, none of which he could repair where they were. He adjusted the choke and put the ignition switch, uh, pushed the ignition switch again. We might be walking after all. He made another adjustment to the choke, then let it set for a minute before giving the switch one last try. It started. At least Chase thought it started. The quad was loud, but he couldn't hear the roar of the engine above the roar of the wind. Do you see the helmets anywhere? He had left them hanging on the handlebars. They're long gone, Nicole said. Chase laughed at himself. They had just spent half the night walking through a hurricane and he was worrying about helmets. He, he should be worried about helmets. He pulled his headlamp off, handed it to Nicole. He told her to climb on behind him and Rashawn to climb on behind Nicole. Everyone lean forward, he shouted. Face your headlamps to the side in opposite directions and keep your eyes open. This way we'll have a 180 degree view. If you see a problem like a big branch flying our direction, tap me on the shoulder in the direction it's coming. I'm going to drive directly to the farmhouse to check on Mama Rossi. He leaned forward until his chin was almost touching his knees. Nicole draped herself across his back. Under other circumstances, he might've felt very different about having Nicole this close to him. And he wondered if Nicole was thinking the same thing. He started out slowly, getting a feel for the overloaded quad. The steering was sluggish in the crosswind. Up ahead, he remembered the road veering to the left. The wind would be at their backs and he might be able to pick up speed. There was standing water on the gravel road, but not nearly as much as there had been on the highway. The quad's balloon tires cut through the water easily, but he'd have to watch out for hydroplaning, which was just as dangerous as driving on ice. That's when you're driving along in water and, um, you, your tires kind of lose contact, they skid along. So if your parents or somebody you're driving with, the car has ever started to slide in water, that's hydroplaning. Hydro is um, water, hydro means water. He followed the road to the left and the steering became more responsive. He increased the speed and tried to recall if there were any other turns before they reached the building below the house. He felt a tap on his right shoulder and grimaced in pain. He looked to his right, but he didn't see anything. He eased off the throttle and something very strange happened. The wind died and the rain stopped completely. Chase shut the quad off. It was silent except for their breathing, which they hadn't been able to hear for hours. Chase looked up and saw stars against a black sky. Weird, Rashawn said. The eye of the storm, Chase said. It's going to start up again, and the back end of the hurricane might be worse than the front. Do you realize that we're talking in normal voices and not shouting at each other? This eye of the storm thing is not why I tapped you on the shoulder, Rashawn said. Then why? 
I know you'll think I'm crazy. Maybe I dozed off or maybe I'm so worn out I'm hallucinating, but I think I saw a big spotted cat running along my side. Looked like a leopard. Chase and Nicole stared at her, absolutely speechless. I told you you'd think I was crazy, but it gets stranger. The cat was carrying what looked like a little monkey in its mouth. The monkey was limp. It looked dead. Poco, Nicole said. Hector, Chase said. Are you saying I did see a leopard carrying a little green monkey? What kind of farm is this? Right now, a very dangerous farm, Nicole said. Chase started the quad, put it in gear, and pushed the throttle as far as it would go. As they sped up the road, he wondered how fast a leopard could run. 3.42 a.m. <coughs> Chase pulled up in front of the Rossi's house, or at least where it used to be. The old farmhouse looked like it had been pushed over by a bulldozer. Nicole was off the quad, screaming for Mama Rossi before the quad came to a complete stop. This was their house? Rashawn asked in shock. Yeah. Chase swung off the quad and stepped into a foot of water. Can I borrow your headlamp? Rashawn slipped it off her forehead. You want to stay here with the quad while I get Nicole? With a leopard running around, Rashawn said. No, thanks. That's why I have to get Nicole. We can't be standing out here in the open like this with Hector running around. And this eye isn't going to last long. When the wind starts up again, this debris is going to be blowing all over the place. We have to find shelter. Then let's get her and get out of here, Rashawn said. Nicole was yelling for Mama Rossi and frantically pulling up floating debris. Chase put his hand on her shoulder. We need to go, he said gently. We need to find Mama Rossi, Nicole shouted. She may not be here, Chase said. I saw a light on the outside of one of the buildings. Nicole turned around and looked. The circus barn. She ran back to the quad with Chase and Rashawn right behind her. When they reached the barn, Nicole was off the quad again before it stopped and running to a side door. A lot of water here, Rashawn said as they hurried to the entrance. I know, Chase said. Inside, Nicole had her arms wrapped around Mama Rossi. They were both crying. Chase was relieved Mama Rossi had made it through the storm, but he knew they were still far from safe. Three feet in from the door, there was a good six inches of standing water. Is that an elephant? Rashawn asked. Her name's Pet, Chase said. Nicole's mom is kind of small. Don't let that fool you, Chase said. She's bigger than she looks and older. She's actually Nicole's grandmother. They walked over and Mama Rossi hugged them both. Where's dad? Nicole asked. Mama Rossi shook her head. I don't know. He left hours ago to see if he could find you. I was sitting in the house waiting for you when it started to come apart. I ran down here and I've been sitting here ever since. Did you stop at the house? Nicole nodded, tears running down her cheeks. It's gone, she said quietly. Mama Rossi put her arms around her. It's just a house. We can rebuild a house. Did you see Poco up there? He jumped out of my arms and disappeared into the night. Rashawn was about to say something, but Nicole cut her off. We didn't see him, she said. I'm sure he's fine. I'm sure your father's fine too, Mama Rossi said. He'll be back now this, that the storm's over. It's not over, Chase said. We're in the eye of... His wind words were cut off by a gust of wind slamming into the metal building. Pet pulled on her chains and threw hay and sawdust over her back and her gray trunk. The wind's going to scare that baby right out of her, Mama Rossi shouted above the noise. Chase glanced at the door. The water was rising. That, my friends, is the end. This is a trilogy, and I do have books two and books three. I'll probably do a survey and ask you if you would like me to keep reading. So, um, we will probably read together again soon. And if we don't read Storm Runners, we'll be reading something else.